I've worked with thousands of SketchUp students, and the difference between the ones that actually got good and the ones that kept struggling, it usually came down to five simple things. Let's talk about what they are and how to fix them. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Stick around to the end for one of the most powerful things you can do to take your SketchUp workflow to the next level. But the first thing that I see students struggling with when they start working in SketchUp, they start way too complex with what they're trying to model. And so this house is a great example. And this is one I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse, but a lot of students, when they get started, they want to jump in and they start one. They want to start working with these really complex models. Well, if you look at this house, this house is huge. Right? It has a ton of different rooms. It has a ton of different complicated elements, all of which take a long time to figure it out. And that's not even mentioning things like the roof, which this is a super, super complex roof and something that a beginner would really struggle with. So this is something I see new users struggle with a lot is they start too complicated. Instead, students should be picking something simple so that they can learn the basics of working in SketchUp. For example, this is one of the example models in my SketchUp uh, beginner modeling workout pack, but you can see how it's only three rooms, but it's got all of the elements that you need in order to get familiar working with SketchUp. It's got openings in the walls, it's got windows, it's got doors. It, it doesn't have all that massively difficult stuff to model. You're just starting with a room and you're adding things piece by piece. And so if you're looking for somewhere to start, and so if you're looking for somewhere to start, you can start either with my Learn SketchUp in 30 Days series or by checking out my SketchUp Beginner Modeling Workout Pack, which is a collection of tutorials I've put together that actually like teach you to use SketchUp by modeling. That's something that's going to be available through um, Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. I'll link to that in the notes down below. So start with something small that you can actually finish so that you don't get frustrated and give up or get so far in that it's something that you can't fix and then you have to start over again. And so another issue that a lot of new students have is they don't finish their models. So they get to a certain point, right? They might have some walls and some doors and things like that, but they don't take it all the way to start to finish, get it all the way to layout and learn how to annotate drawings and things like that. The problem is if you just get to a certain point in a 3D model and then you just kind of quit and move on to the next one, you don't actually have a chance to figure out if your workflow actually works from start to finish. So if you're modeling something like this apartment building, you want to go ahead and take it all the way to the end with everything toggled on and you want to take it over to layout out and you want to go through and at least create some usable plans from that document. What that does is that gives you the ability to inspect your workflow and make sure that things like your organization are actually working and that your model is easy to work with. So pick a small project, take it from start to finish, and make sure that your entire workflow actually works. All right, and then number three, students aren't auditing their workflow after each project. So say you went through and you worked on a giant project like this one and you did get it all done. And then you kind of made your plans, you uh, got everything in the layout, you did what you needed to do with it, and then you moved on. Well, that's fine. And um, you spent a lot of work on that project, but what a lot of students don't do is they don't go back and audit their workflow and figure out what didn't work. Like for example, this model has everything in here as raw geometry, which is very painful to adjust. People that are trying to learn SketchUp should be taking a little bit at time after each project that they create and just looking at their process and saying, okay, what worked, what didn't work, things like that. And so there's a number of questions students should be asking. So one of the questions is how organized did my model feel? How easy was making changes and edits? Is there something that I can do with my workflow in order to make this work a little bit better? And also, how easy was it to create my scenes for layout? Like what kind of organization could I be doing in order to make this so that making edits and changes is a lot easier? So should I be breaking out things like my furniture and fixtures, my light fixtures, things like that onto groups so that I can toggle them on and off? And so otherwise, you're just going to stay in the same place. So I love the phrase, practice doesn't make perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. So you need to be auditing your process and figuring out, you know, does the way that I have my cabinet hardware um, in my models make sense? Could I make things better using components? Things like that. So take a little while after you finish a project and do an audit of what worked and what didn't and try to figure out processes that can make that modeling easier in the future. And so one of the things I've seen that makes students the most effective is they're always adding tools 
to their toolkit, meaning they're going through and they're finding tools that can both automate processes and make their lives a lot easier. This can be as simple as automating the creation of ramps and things like that with tools like Curvashear, all the way through using tools like Profile Builder in order to replicate commonly used profiles that you're going to use over and over again. So by adding those tools to your tool set and keeping a good list of the tools that you actually use, you can make your life significantly easier because not only can you automate something once, you can automate it again. So I highly recommend students keep an eye out for extensions that can automate parts of their process after they've learned the fundamentals so that they can go through and they can actually save time over and over again. So Keep an eye out for new tools, incorporate them into your workflow. Don't just use them once, use them multiple times. And then finally, the thing that I see that makes students better across all of their different projects is they're thinking about creating a library of objects that they can reuse over and over again. So for example, this is a library that I've been building of plants that I can just reuse over and over again so that I don't have to reset up plants time and time again. Now this is something that you should be thinking about what you're reusing. So one of the things that I've done is I've built these dynamic cabinets. These dynamic cabinets have saved me hours because I can just drop them in place and just scale them to whatever size that I want and they just resize automatically. So I've built these dynamic components as something where um, I can actually use them inside of my modeling workflow. I've got things like dynamic doors that I can place so I can just scale this door in order to make it fit. This has absolutely revolutionized all of the different modeling that I've done. I've set this up where it actually has gaps around the outside. So that if I need to reuse a cabinet door, I can just use the flip tool in order to do that. But all I have to do is just bring these baseline cabinets in to the next kitchen or interior or whatever that I do. And so the only reason that I have these is because I took a second to step back and looked at what parts of my process were taking me a lot of time. And then I started building a library so that I could automate the portion of my project that's happening over and over again. So now I can just bring these in with different cabinet styles and I can just drop them in. But taking that few minutes to think about what can be repeated and what can be automated inside of your process can save you so much time moving on. So don't just close out a project and just move on to the next one. Take a minute to think what in your workflow could be automated and repeated in order to save you time in the future. But if you are looking for some practice exercises and some things to do to make your workflow better, make sure you check out the SketchUp Beginner Workflow Pack. That's on sale through the end of the day on Sunday, at which point it won't be available as a standalone product anymore. So I will link to that in the notes down below, but I'd love to hear from you. What are the things that make your workflow better? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.